Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Personal Feedback Presentation, Jesus gives personal feedback regarding how our family of origin determines our relationship with God and making the choice to withdraw from abusive people and regarding how others attempt to manipulate our will. Recorded on the 6th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. Hey, how are we doing? Good. Feeling fresh. Feeling fresh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, actually, Amber, you're one of the persons I'd like to give some feedback to, but you can do it sitting in the seat. So if we just bring a mic down to Amber, and then after Amber, it will be up at Cecilia. So if the other mic can come across to Cecilia, then I've got both of them covered. Uh, I'm just going to do these from the seat, because they'll be quite sort of a bit more brief uh, feedback, because I want to talk to the whole group about uh, one particular issue uh, afterwards. So the question that uh, this is, so this uh, to introduce the topic is is our uh, personal feedback session uh, on the analysing your desire and will to love, and um, and I've chosen Amber because she's asked a good question, and that is why is bad karma and negative events happening to my family when I embrace the way? Now this is a very uh, important uh, question to ask actually. And why it's happening, Amber, is quite simple. There are spirits around who, who all, of, all of you, any, any of you who attend any of our groups or even listen to any of our events or, or go online and listen to the events, any, all of you are uh, targeted by dark spirits. And, and they know that they can manipulate your will by threatening you. Um, because yesterday when I um, came home, Cameron looked terrible. Yeah. looked like he'd been hit by a bus, yeah. and both of my children had been physically hurt, which is rare. Yeah. My three-year-old son had um, grazed all down the right side of his face, yeah. and my daughter had a lashing across her mouth. Right. And Cameron had a two-hour sleep, <laughs> and I was like, what the heck happened to you guys? Yeah, yeah. And Cameron stated that the um, injuries of the children happened like five minutes apart of each other and yep. I was like, am I, is this from me or like... What Will it be that? from the both of you, allowing the opening by this, to this manipulation by spirits? Um, they know that they can impact upon you by threatening your children, threatening your family, right? That's, that freaks me out. Well, yeah, to me it's an indication that you're doing the right thing. Do you see what I'm saying? It just depends on how you look at it. See, see, most people are governed by fear, and most spirits who are in dark places know that, right? And say so they know how <coughs> how to harm you by just triggering whatever fear it is that that they can feel that you don't want to feel. So they know for yourself, Amber, that the family thing is a big thing for you. So all they do is use any opportunity they can to attack your family. Now, at that moment, either Cameron or yourself or both of you weren't in your own bodies. You weren't connected to yourself and you weren't connected to what you were doing. That's what, why, generally why harm happens to children. Yeah. So I would ask him the times that it happened. I, what, I, I, I did. What time did it happen? Um, about 2.30. Yeah. And I Can you remember what you were doing at the time? No, no. I really don't remember <laughs> no, what right. I was doing. It's a bit hard when it's a bit <laughs> far removed. I, I, I was listening to a lot of truth yesterday, so I think I was t trying to digest it all. But the also Well, the reality is yesterday, the majority of you were in this state actually yesterday where you just felt like a bit overwhelmed with things again. So... And when you get overwhelmed, a lot of you just step out of your bodies. You just don't want to be here, really. And you'd be better off getting up and leaving, to be honest. But, but I've said to you, if you leave, you're not coming back. So that's hard. <laughs> that's hard, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, you're trapped here now. <laughs> but, but the reality is that, that there are many, many dark spirits who do, want, who do not want 
truth to be present on the planet. Now, the way truth is going to be present on the planet is by many of you acting upon what you learn. That's how it's going to be present. So they know that. And so they know, they know the best way to influence that is to push your buttons, whatever your buttons are. Now, for you, your buttons are fear of what will happen to your children because you're highly invested in having children emotionally. Okay. Why, why didn't they hurt me, though? Well, you're highly invested in having children, so they're actually hurting you through that process. You're highly invested in having children because that's your idea of a woman's worth, right? And so, and so as a result, they know that your investments in your children are quite extreme, and as a result of that, they know all they have to do is have an accident here with them or an accident there with them, and you're going to probably want to get off the path again. Well, I just want to tell them to... Go shove it, because <laughs> that's not happening. Um, well, no, they know better than that, Amber. They know that all they've got to do is put a bit of pressure on in this regard, and, and it's highly likely you will. And so this is where you're going to need some courage. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the development of the quality of courage is a, is a very important quality to develop if you really want to use your will to love. What they're trying to do, if I can explain it in terms of your will... Yeah. What they're going is they go, okay, inside of Amber's soul is an emotion of fear associated with her children and, and these spirits who are around you, they basically go, okay, we know that if we trigger that fear, then we will manipulate her will. We will manipulate what she feels that she should do. Right Now, you see this happening all the time, actually, in the world, where the whole point of terrorism is to manipulate your will, isn't it? You know, do something, do something even if it's to one or two people, and you'll become afraid, and therefore I can manipulate your will. So it, the whole point of terrorism is to manipulate your will. The whole, the whole point of m most advertising is to manipulate your will, isn't it? How do I get you to buy something? I tell you, you need it, that you're not cool without it. And I, 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 I hit all of your unhealed emotional condition and that's how I manipulate your will. That's, that's the main way on this earth that your will is manipulated. It's very rare for people's will to be manipulated in a positive direction or influenced in a positive direction. Now, in the last group, we talked about the, the word influence. There is influence that is good. Anybody who's influencing you to be more loving or more truthful is obviously, that's a good influence. And there are influences that are bad. That anybody who's trying to manipulate you or influence you into doing the wrong thing, out of harmony with love and truth, is obviously bad or evil. And, and most of you are so afraid of influence that you're afraid to be influenced by anybody who's positive. But unfortunately, because of your triggers of fears, you get quite frequently influenced by the people who are negative. Does that make sense? So, so yes, you're making a choice to return to sort of listening to the teachings again, right? And then, and then all of a sudden bad things start happening in your family again. That's their, their, the spirits with, with, around you guys know, well, if I put a bit of pressure on this particular problem that Amber has, then what will happen is it's highly likely she will just fold and forget it again. Right? which is what they want. Now, you knowing that can actually help you with your will, can't it? Yes. Because you can go, okay, I'm not going to do that this time, so what's my alternative? Well, my alternative is to feel my fear about my children being hurt. And once I feel my fear about my children being hurt, I might get into the reason why I'm so afraid of them being hurt, because I must remind you they're not your children. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They're God's children. And God has the ability to look after them. And, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do everything you should to look after them. But it does mean that at some point you've got to trust in God's laws, trust in God's love, trust that you know, if you do loving and truthful thing yourself, that, that God's laws will support your activity and actions. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is the best way to protect my children? By working through the emotion you have of a fear of something happening to them. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm and you're not willing to feel that at this point because you're, you're, you're in a panic about it. Yes. 
So you're not willing to feel that. So, so you don't want to feel that. So the first thing you need to go is, okay, I don't want to feel that. Why don't I want to feel that? Uh, and then, then there's something personal for you. It's not about your children here. It's about you. Somehow you will be affected if it happens, if some harm happens to your children. How will you be affected? See, mo most parents would be devastated if something happened to their children. Why would they be devastated? Well, I don't understand the devastation, you see. It's often said that the very worst thing that can happen to a person in their life is to have their children die before they die. It's often said, right? I don't understand that at all. That, that is to do with an addiction inside of oneself. It's not to do with the issue itself. The reality is there's no such thing as death, so if they passed, they'd be in the spirit world. So there's got to be something personal about that. Something, some kind of personal investment you get from your children. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's the thing to have a look at. Thank you. Yep. I won't tell you what it is, but you need to look at it. Damn it. Okay. If, we go back, <laughs> if we go back to Cecilia. Now, Cecilia asks a good question. Um, Cecilia comes from a, a background where she's not been brought up with religion. And, uh, and, and many of you would think that's probably an advantage, right? And, and it can be. It can be an advantage. So the question she asks is, do I automatically project towards God whatever unloving emotions I have about my parents, even though I'm from a non-religious background? Right? And, you know, at, she says she considers God as a new person to get to know. Is she being dis delusional about that? Well, no, I don't feel you're being dis delusional about that. I feel you do see God as a new person to get to know. However, you do prevent God from communicating with you. right? And I want to explain the reason why. It's to do with your second question. The second question is, I know I'm terrified and hopeless to confront my parents on their treatment of me. Does speaking the truth require me to do so? Well, let, uh, let's answer that question first. No, you do, you're not required to sit in front of a, a pair of abusive people and talk to them about and allow them to abuse you more. You're not required to do that. Does that make sense? So you, you don't have to sit there and let them abuse you more. However, if you truly deal with this particular emotional stuff with your parents, because of their previous abuse of you, you would probably choose to not have any more interaction with them. Does that make sense? Until they change. Now, they, being abusers, won't let you do that without a confrontation. Does that make sense? I'm terrified of that. Sorry, you're terrified? I'm terrified of they get angry with me and confront me being... Um, c confront me um, from choosing to stay away from them. Yes. And that's why you choose to have some association with them still, so that you can sort of mitigate the potential rage that they will have once, once you say, no, I've had enough of this. Now, many people are doing that with their families. They're sort of in the manage what I'd classify as a management mode <laughs> of their families. And, and really it's just to prevent your own emotional experience from that result. You see, if you do that, you will actually see their true nature their true nature will be exposed and and what will happen then is you'll have to feel about their true nature and that's the thing you're afraid of feeling now the question is how does that relate to god well the reality is you is that god you still see as an authority figure someone who's in authority someone who has power yes all right and this is how you impose this belief upon your upon God is that you, you sort of see anybody in power as to someone to be wary of and to sort of be a little bit afraid of because you need to do what they want you to do in order to get you know love from them or, or even just to, in your case it's not even about love you're just trying to prevent abuse yeah. does that make sense and and this is how it does impact upon your relationship with God and, and it causes you to not fully open your heart to God because you're sort of wary of having a relationship with God. Does that make sense? You're, you're wary, you're worried that God will overtake you somehow just like your parents have tried to do, right? 
Yeah. And so it does have an effect on your viewpoint and treatment of God, even though intellectually you believe that God's like a clean state and you can get to know God. So there isn't as many blockages as, say, someone who was brought up in a religion. But at the end of the day, the family-based blockages are the largest blockages towards God. I, sense? I suspect it's so. Yeah. So, so there is, a, and, and also the, there is a lack of trust in God here too, in that your, your fear of raising issues with your family, or it's not really raising issues. All you need to do is not see them in order to love yourself. You just need to not see them. And you know that that's going to cause them a huge amount of anger, which will then be projected at you, and they would attempt to reverse that decision of yours, and, and that's what you're afraid of doing. So you know that, but, that, but God's your real parent, and God's never going to do that to you. God's never going to reject you. God's never going to do those things to you. So even if you lose your family in the end, God is still going to be your family. You know, you're never going to lose God. You're never going to lose that connection with God. Does that make sense? So that's the thing to also trust, have faith in that, that God is good and God's going to be good with you no matter what your family do. The, the other thing is that quite frequently we have a tendency to put ourselves in danger. When people threaten us or have threatened us in the past, we have a tendency to actually placate those kind of people and we don't realise that in placating them we're actually placing ourselves in further danger further danger to be further abused right and this is why you are far better off completely removing yourself from an abusive person no matter what the who the person is whether it's family members husband wife whatever you're fa far better off completely removing yourself from an abusive person than you are staying in the relationship i must say though in listening to this some of you think someone's being abusive when they're not being abusive at all. Some of you actually believe that somebody not feeding your addictions is abuse, and that's not the case at all. They're actually loving you in that place. So you've got, you've got to make sure that it's about, you know, it's about an issue of love from God's perspective as to why you're choosing these particular, making these particular choices of leaving a person versus staying. But leaving our family, Cecilia, is, is one of the side benefits i think see it as um of receiving a new family in that god, god is our parent our mother and father and our new family is anybody who wishes to love and be in harmony with truth that's our new family and hopefully there'll be bigger a bigger family as that as time goes on right and those particular people are never going to harm us. They're never going to be attack us. They're never going to abuse us. They're always going to be supportive. And, and, and you've not really had an experience of that. So, so you know, and, and being one of the first people in a country, um, as you are to, to process through certain things, um, unfortunately, when you're one of the first, it, you feel like totally alone in that place. But understand, you're not alone. You've got God. You've got all your spirit friends and, and anybody here who's also in a state of love who would like to be your family member as well, right? But, but frequently we think we're alone and our family that we have physically are our only options and, and our only safety when actually many times our family are not very safe at all. In terms of how it impacts on your will, your will is being manipulated by your terror of the confrontation that may occur does that make sense so in other words you're you're choosing to remain in an unloving situation to yourself because you're afraid that the situation might get worse in the future right and i and i say, suggest to you that yes your family will have problems with you you know leaving them uh, as the saying goes but you are also not looking at what god's laws might do to support you in that process that's my faith yeah that's where your faith comes in in god's goodness you know to look after you god knows that you have to work through this terror i know too yeah you know that too you know it's affecting your life in other other ways too yeah. so you know that you need to work through this terror god knows that so he's going to try and support you through that process and make it as safe as possible while you're trying to do that but but your terror is going to have to come up and be felt 
and that that is a choice that at some point I feel you probably make. Does that I make hope sense? So. It just depends on how much pain you endure before then. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, if you don't make the choice, it is, is just more pain. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank good. Thank you. Thank you.